All right, welcome everybody. Welcome to uh, Pastel Society of Southern California's Theme Thursday. Uh, our Theme Thursdays are twice a month. They're on the second and third, uh, excuse me, second and fourth Thursday of the month. And we meet here at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time until eight o'clock. It is free to everyone. Uh, feel free to join us. You can see on our calendar at pssewebsite.org. Again, that's pssewebsite.org. You can see our calendar and see when our, our up and uh, up, our, um, our schedule, what our schedule is for our theme Thursday. So you can always see what's going on there too. We have a lot of events, we have different shows, but again, this is a coming together of artists who want to chat art, who want to demonstrate their talent. And we have a special, special um, episode of theme Thursday this week. We have our, our wonderful longtime member, Mike Ishikawa. And again, you, you don't have to participate. You can just relax, have a glass of wine, uh, a beer and, uh, and and just chat art. You know, watch watch our some of our, our phenomenal artists uh, participate and, and demo for us. So, uh, if anybody would like to volunteer, anybody can. If they want to volunteer an idea or a theme, again, it's Theme Thursday. So, I always like to say that if you aren't having fun, you're doing it wrong. And that's what Theme Thursday is about. It's about camaraderie and coming together and being creative. So, uh, without further ado, I want to announce Mike Ishikawa. I've known Micah Shikawa for a few years now, and in that time, I am just blown away by his ability to um, create these beautiful paintings in about three seconds. And it's just, it's just well, <laughs> I exaggerate, it's actually four. Uh, but to, it, he, uh, he, he's, just, he's just amazing, and the way he just flings those pastels. I took, I was fortunate enough to take one of his workshops, and um, I learned a lot. Now, Mike and I, we, you could say that we fall on different parts of the spectrum regarding our styles, but there's nothing, right? There's always, excuse me, there's always something you can learn from another artist. There's all, every artist has an insight. Everybody has a story. And it's just amazing that it doesn't matter what genre, what style, what another other artist is doing. You always seem to be able to, to sponge something. And, and, and there's something, again, the pastel medium is something that is luscious. It is. It is. It is a medium that is quite tactile. Uh, for those who don't know what the pastel medium is, it, it's actually pure pigment in a stick form. Comes in different hardnesses, but it is a medium that hides many artists from uh, together from many different spectrums. So I'm going to go ahead and spotlight Micah Chicago. He's coming in from where are you coming in from? Palos Verdes, right? Yeah, yeah, so I know, I know when I when you took my class, you did uh, a really nice seascape in about two hours. So <laughs> that that's fast for me. That's fast for me. That would be a nice one too. <laughs> well, thank you. All right. Well, uh, Mike Mike has uh, Mike is not only an artist; he is an author and uh, put together a wonderful book uh, from all his, um, for lack of a better word, his escapades. Uh, in his, his adventures of traveling um, to Mexico and, and to uh, China. And, and I mean, it's a wonderful book. So Mike, why don't you tell us where we might be able to get that book? Uh, I've got about uh, 15 copies left if they want to buy one. Uh -huh. Here's the book. Um, it's called Sketching uh, and Travelogue with Pen and Markers. And uh, these are just little sketches that I, I do every evening when I'm traveling. I go into my hotel room, I turn on my uh, iPad and, and find a sketch that I like to do and do it in my hotel room. Yeah, phenomenal. And I, and I filled up 15 books of these sketches. And so everybody wanted, uh, some people, have, Lynn kept pounding me of putting together a book. so. During COVID, I thought, wow, this is a great opportunity. So I did it. And uh, she helped me edit the book. And a friend of mine told me about a program called um, uh, Keynote. And I did all of that through Keynote. I transferred the photographs or the, or the sketch. I did right. the text. I put the line work in there. I was able to scan photos and put them in. So you can see that little oh, photo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's great. And uh, that's a little restaurant that we went to. And uh, this is the train that we went to, we re-rode 
to get to this little village. That's excellent. And and majority of these in your book are done with uh, what? Pen and ink. Yeah. Pen and ink. Pen so and, ink. and there's a there's a there's a class in here too. There's a class in here on how to sketch. So throughout the sketch sketchbook, there's a. Uh, uh, tips on how to do it and everything so yeah so if that's it's available i donate all the proceeds to this the disabled program disabled sports program in mammoth and i've got uh 15 books left and out of i printed 300 and i've got 15 left and i don't know if i'm wow. gonna, if well I'm, that's 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 excellent i um uh, well you know what I love from, my book i love my book thank you mike what a great <laughs> i love my book too Mike, um, why don't you tell us, I don't know if you can step into camera, but why don't you tell us a little bit about your history with art? What, what, uh, what got you into one, uh, oh. all that doing, you know, that, all that sketching and two, what drove you towards the pastel medium? Well, that's an interesting story. Um, oh, uh, I, as you know, I've been sketching uh, for years since 1998, I started doing these sketchbooks. And in 2009, I, I had some time. I was, when I started retiring, I started retiring on a kind of a gradual basis. I started re retiring from five days a week, I went to three days a week. Oh, wow. And I did three days a week for about a year. And then I went to two days a week. And then after two days a week, I went to one day a week. And after that, I went to no week, no, no work. <laughs> no work. <laughs> that, was, that was around 2009. And I was searching for something to do, you know, because uh, I wanted to just cre keep my creative juices going. And I thought, you know, art would be the best way to do it. So I went to the P Palos Verdes Lawn Show in Malaga Cove. And I ran into Lynn. Lynn, Margaret, and Bonnie Mattello. And they were just at that time getting ready to launch Pastel Society of Southern California. That was 2009. Yep. yep. So I was talking to Lynn about it and I said, gee, what's pastel? And I said, well, let me show you. So she showed me the pastel, what it is. And I thought, wow, this is, this is great. It's, it's, it's like drawing with a pen and ink, except it's color. That's right. Oh, wow, that's a re that's a fantastic revelation for me. You know, being able to draw something. I hated colored pencil because it wasn't strong enough. The colors were not strong enough. But pastels, wow! I mean, you lay that pastel down, and you want red, you can get red. You know, and I thought, wow, this is it. So uh, um, I had no idea what to do with it. So I signed up for an adult education class at the Torrance. I found Torrance Art School. And I, uh, Beverly Metcalf was a teacher. And she said, well, Mike, he says, you know, I mean, we have all mediums here. We got oils, we got watercolors, we got sketchers. And if you want to do pastels, just pick up a paint and just pick up a newsprint or no, I mean, just pick up a photograph from these magazines and, and draw it. So that's how I started. That's awesome. And then I found out about Joe Mancuso's class. Yep, Joe's here. Manhattan Beach Creative Arts Center. So around 2011, I started in Joe's class. And Joe's class was really the, really the big awakening for me. It was just fantastic. You go there every week. You have a summer, spring, winter session. I don't know if there, if there were more, but Joe had a weekly class. They usually went about six to eight weeks and I learned a lot from Joe. I mean, well, I, Joe let me, let me, let me interrupt you just there real quick, Mike, because again, we want to, we want to acknowledge Joe Mancuso, uh, who's uh, one of our members. And, and uh, by the way, he, he's, he is doing some classes at uh, Destination Art in Torrance. Um, if, if anybody wants to see Joe's work, uh, Joe, do you mind giving us your website real quick? Joe Mancuso. It's mancusofineart.com. Mancusofineart.com. Thank you. Right. Uh, Mancusofineart.com. Yeah, uh, wonderful artists. I, I got again. I, I've been. I was able to take Joe's Joe's class too. So um, again, if, if anybody's looking, again, that's Mancusofineart.com. So uh, sorry, sorry about that, Mike. Go ahead. Yeah. So anyway, that was that was just great. I mean, to to be able to paint every week, 
uh, for three hours. That was fantastic. And when I signed up for Joe's class, uh, people started telling me about workshops at the Pastel Society. Well, we're going to have a workshop with so and so. And so I started signing up for every workshop that I could get into. And that's, that's one of the, the big reasons to join the Pastel Society of Southern California, because if you want to have a workshop with Richard McKinley or Liz, Liz Sullivan or whoever, if you try to sign up for a class through the Pastel Journal, you're never going to get in. Yeah, yeah. But if you sign up with the Pastel Society of Southern California, chances are you're going to get into a class. Yes. And so that's what I did. I started signing up for Richard McKinley and uh, Doug Dawson, Liz, uh, uh, Tony Elaine, all, all yeah. these guys. I mean, I've got the back of my um, easel here is filled with signatures of all the people that I think. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, and that's what that's one thing you gotta say. PSSC takes pride in, in making sure that we try to bring the best talent to our members. So yeah, we've had some phenomenal, phenomenal uh, teachers come to uh, Redondo Beach and, and, and teach uh, the members their, um, their different styles. So yeah, anyway, sorry. so, so after, after taking all these workshops, what, what, did, what, did you, what did you get out of it? Well, you know, the thing that you get out of a workshop is if you sign up for a two, three, or four day workshop, is you, get, you immerse, immerse yourself in art and painting for four solid days. I mean, that's all you think about. You paint. And uh, you don't worry. A lot of, I think the thing that's uh, really bad for a lot of artists that go to these workshops is they try to do a, a painting that's going to be in a show or something like that. You have, you have to go into these workshops with an open mind and be free and be uh, not afraid to, to, to lay down the painting and not afraid to do a bad painting. I mean, how many painting, bad paintings do you do? I mean, everybody that paints out of one, out of five paintings, you might do one good one. The rest of the ones are, are going to the trash can. And that's the way you have to look at it when you go into workshop is keep an open mind and, and take in everything that the uh, teacher is telling you. You know, one little information is all it takes to make you a better painter. Like Richard, with Richard McKinley, he told me to, the, the watercolor underpainting. I've never done that before. Well, I learned how to do it. Uh, I learned how to do um, pastel underpainting with uh, Karen Margulis. Uh, Liz, Liz Sullivan said, if you're going to do underpainting, use the opposite color of the wheel. So mm -hmm. if, if you're going to do a blue sky, put orange on the bottom on the, on the underpainting and let some of that orange come through. It gives you th that extra uh, reflection and it gives a, a more life to your painting. And so all these things you, you learn when you take a workshop and, and you learn from others in the class too. So, I mean, you, you kind of walk around, see what everybody else is doing and you learn a lot. Absolutely. I, I think that's a, a, a really valid point is that when you do take a workshop, you want to go in with that open mind, right? You want to throw away the ego. You want to make sure that you go in there with, a, you know, with again, with an open mind and, and be ready to, to learn because what it is, is not everything is going to suit you, not everything, but there, you, you will learn something and, it, and hopefully you find something that you can put in that artistic toolbox of yours, right? That will accompany right. you on your artistic journey for years to come. Uh, it, again, it, workshops are invaluable. And, right. uh, uh, one, of the, one of the things I remember is taking your workshop, Otto. I thought, you know, God, uh, Otto's giving a still life show, uh, workshop. God, I hate still life. So I signed <laughs> up. I signed up, and I'm telling you, it was the most exciting workshop. One of the most exciting workshops I've taken. Thank I painted. You. I painted peppers all day, different yeah. kind. Uh, it was a one photograph that that Otto gave me about three peppers. Yep, I've got uh, one right here, right above my wall, right above me. I've got one of your your pepper paintings right there. It's, it's, and, it's and right I, above my desk here. I I painted it in close up, far away all kinds of different angles and i'm telling you it was a ball yeah so, I, I was amazed at how many different ways you approached it and, and again that's that's what you want to do in a workshop you want to just be able to experiment that's the fun right. part of, of taking that's a workshop is allowing yourself to fail miserably 
uh, because something is is going to something is going to stick. Right? Someone was saying, "Oh, I get it." Okay, so yeah, okay. if you're if you're too timid to put the pastel down, or if you're too timid to experiment, um, then you defeat the purpose of taking a workshop. Right. Yeah, you just got to be very experimental, you know, and try to learn something different. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you do the same old thing over and over and again, you're not going to get any better. Yeah. But if you can kind of step out of your bounds and do something that you've never done or use a color that you've never used before, or that's how you progress and you become a better painter. But if you do the same old thing over and over again, you get the same old results. So yeah. you're not going to learn too much. So yeah. anyway, I've, I've tried to get started. Huh? No, I think we're getting a little bit of feedback here. Let me. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so anyway, yeah, that's that's the thing with uh, the pastel society, and so that that's how I got into pastels, and uh, that was uh, two thousand and nine, and so I've been painting now for what thirteen years now, and wow. it's been it's been a fantastic journey for me. I mean, I've 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 gotten more out of it than anything I've ever done. I mean, that's how much I've really enjoyed painting. I mean, it's it just it's just a joyous occasion for me to, to step in front of that easel and paint. I just love it. And uh, I used to sketch a lot, but now I hard the only time I sketch is when I'm on a trip. And but I hardly ever sketch anymore. Uh, whenever I have a t some extra time, uh, you know. And the thing is, I never paint by myself. I have to work. I have to paint in a workshop. Uh, I paint out paint with other people, go to class. But for me to just sit in my studio and paint, it never happens because I can't get stimulated. I can't get excited about you need it. The, you, know? you need the motivation. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, you got to be motivated to do something. And so nothing motivates me than painting with other painters that are, are excellent painters, you know, and I get yeah. really choked up with that. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, it's not like anything... If you if you if you're the top dog in the class amongst a mediocre painters, you're not very good. But if you're the top dog in a class with really great painters, then you got something to brag about. And so <laughs> I say take classes and paint with people that that you look up to because then your 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 painting skills are gonna really <clears throat> blossom very quickly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, always, always challenge yourself. Always challenge yourself. Be willing to admit that you know what we don't know everything, and uh, and, and always keep elevating yourself so that so that sometimes you you think you know something and then you revisit it a different way or approach it a different way and then you realize oh wow okay you know what I, I, I could see how my painting has gotten stronger because I allowed myself to challenge myself this way. So yeah. you know it's it's an ex excellent uh, excellent thing if you can again take workshops. And, and, and that's, what the, the, again, the, the, the beauty of Theme Thursday is that we get talented artists like yourself, like Joe Mancuso, Mary Aslan, all these artists who are willing to give their insight. So we're excited about what you're going to be presenting today. So why don't you tell us what it is you're going to be working on today? Uh, well, today I decided to do boats. I mean, uh, I was really fearful of doing boats in the beginning. And uh -huh. uh, because it, it's... it's it's got different shapes. And uh, I did one painting of a boat head on and it was my most successful painting of a boat. And so that's what I'm gonna do. It's a boat head on. When you do a boat head on, it's a very simple shape. You know, you got, you got a, a, a bow here and just two sides in a cabin. So it's very simple. Um, I did this a while back, but it's a more complex kind of a painting. Oh, nice. You know, it's got all these curves, so it's a lot more difficult. Uh, I did this one about six years ago, and I've always liked it, so I've kept it. And uh, so, anyway, uh, I just like the way it came out. Yeah. So, and where was that at, Mike? These are in the same old place. It's in San Pedro. Mm -hmm. it, it's a pier uh, in San Pedro where all these old fishing boats dock up. And uh, it's a wonderful place to paint. Uh, Bernard likes to go there a lot. And uh, I keep this book right here. 
Yeah. This here fishing boat. Huh. And uh, in here are all these photographs that I take of fishing boats. Wow. See them? Different, different shapes, different colors, different times of day. And I just keep it in this book. And when I feel up to it, I, I kind of gravitate toward one and did it and do it. See that one right there? I Which think one? that one, this one right here with the three boats in a row. Uh, please point to it because we're, we're having a different, yeah. Oh, here, this one. That one, this, okay. This one, yeah, three okay. boats in a row. You never see it there, but I happen to see three boats in a row. And uh, I did a painting of it a while back. It's just an okay painting, but that's yeah. it. Mm. The, uh, you, you never see it tied up that way, three boats in a row. Huh. And this restaurant back here, uh -huh. Utro's, it's been there since the 30s. Wow. Fishmen used to go and eat. What's it, what's it called? Uh, Utro's. Utro's. Yeah. Oh, Utro's. Wow. And this is uh, right by um, Ports of Call. Remember mm -hmm. the old Ports of Call in San Pedro? Right. Yeah, right. this area is all part of the Ports of Call. And this particular uh, dockage area is reserved for fishing boats. And 20 years, 15 years ago, this place was filled with fishing boats. Now oh, you're yeah. lucky to find a dozen there at one time. And it's still nice to go there. You see, you see guys net, mending nets and working on different things in their, in their boat. So it's kind of a nice place to go. So, well, Mike, how are you, how are you going to approach uh, this piece? And first of all, let's, let's start off with your surface. What, what are we working on? Okay, uh, the surface is, uh, this particular surface is UART 400. Nice, okay. okay. And, and, and and you did you mount that yourself or did this that... I, I mount this myself I uh, oh. what I do is uh, let me show you the glue this is the glue that I use right here right yeah it's a 3m glue and they've got a propellant in here now that's California approved got it. Uh, not it was you couldn't buy this for about six months, uh, there was no none of this available because it had a, a propellant in here that was not allowed by California. Yeah, but it's now back on the market again. And what I do is I I spray the back side of this UART, and then I use a brayer, which is one of these things. Yeah, yeah. And you just roll it down. And uh, this particular poster board, I buy, I that's the find of the century. I buy that at the Dollar Tree uh, for uh, two sheets for a dollar. Oh, wow. They're, they're about this big, twice yeah. the size. I cut them in half and then I mount it on here and it gives you a great surface. You can, you can do uh, alcohol wash on it. It doesn't buckle. Really? And, um, you can you can this piece of paper here is about if you buy it uh, from um, uh, Dakota Art on sale, mm -hmm. it's about four dollars. It comes to about four dollars a sheet for this. Yeah, no, it's excellent. I, th I think it's my favorite paper. I love your art paper. Yeah. Um, the only thing I was going to say was, Mike, I, I used to use Super Seventy Seven a lot, and I stopped using it because it it, it was it wasn't very heat resistant. Like during warm weather, it would tend to buckle up on the uh, on the edges so I, I stopped using it i don't know what that new formula has but i haven't tried it yet so i just want to you know the thing with this auto is you've got to put about three coats on there okay spray right. it way spray it this way yeah. spray it this way and then put it down immediately and brayer it down tight and i've never had a problem with any lifting oh that's yeah. awesome yeah. you know yeah. what? i'm gonna give it another try because i did like super sunday when i when i had it but again it was it was a heat Oh, okay, so we're using UART 400. Um, what is going to be, I see you've got some horizontals, you've got some verticals. Yeah. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, what I like to do when I do a, a, a painting is I like to grid it off mm -hmm. like that. F four grids. It gives you a pretty place to start. Like you, you, when you start right there, you know that's going to be right there, right? Correct. So, so it gives you a good starting point 
uh -huh. to start your sketch. So that's the reason I like to do that. Otherwise, if you go ahead and draw it out, it's going to take you more time and it might be not be accurate. But if you can put this grid in there, you know, when you go up to here, right there, that's yeah. where this is going to be up in this area. Yeah. So it makes your drawing a lot quicker and easier if you grid off. And the thing with the, with when you do um, a grid is you have to make sure that the proportion of your photo is the same as your paper. So if you draw a line through here, see it goes almost right to that corner. Correct. So Correct. You know, Absolutely. So you know that the proportion of this is the same proportion as your paper. Yeah. One of the easiest ways to format uh, your your paper. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's that's how that's the reason I do this. And then I just put the same grid on my uh, UART 400 and, and, and you can, what you're taking is you're taking this small photo and enlarging it into this. Yeah. So it's an easier way to enlarge it. So that's, that's the reason I do it. That. I, that's the reason I grid it off. And so, and so once you grid it off, what's, uh, is there a recipe? Is there, is what, what typically is your next step? Well, what I try to do is, is the, the thing is gonna be this boat. Uh -huh. So, uh, and then this little wharf in here to, to show that it's tied up. I've already went ahead and, and sketched that wharf out. And I've got the basic outline of that boat. And now I know, see that that, that little cabin area is going to be just about right here. Correct. So I'm going to come in now and just start sketching the rest of it out. And then, and then what I do is after that is I'm going to come in here. I started using ink this, ah. is, um, this is this is an ink that i found on the internet i tried different inks and this one happened to be the one i really like it's made oh yeah familiar with that uh and it's oh, wait, a, maybe, maybe not what, what is there a brand on there it look it looks familiar at first it's japanese ink it's made in japan right. um i think it's made for sumi sumi uh printing you know with right. a brush yeah yeah and so that's what it's made for so when you put that down, you get that real rich black on the on mm. your paint. Well, can I ask you then? Are are you kind of sketching with that ink, or are you just kind of it's just are you putting it very somewhat loosely, like almost a tea consistency? Well, what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to put this side here, right here. That's going to be just totally black. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. See these little windows up here? I'm going to mm -hmm. put those in in black, and see that little area here and here. Mm -hmm. that's going to be black and uh, maybe some of this down here in black but, and then some of that reflection i might just pull my brush down but that's it and then i'm going to come in with my um, pastels and do the same thing and then wash everything with alcohol and let it drip and let it full around and that's how you start off my that's how i start off my paintings so that I don't get tight. If right. you have a really drippy, runny painting, you can then kind of start res resurrecting your painting and trying to get something out of it. But if you if you do a real tight little underpainting, I find I get real even tighter when I do my pastel. Got it. So I try to be loose with my underpainting so that my paintings then develop into a more looser look. Yeah, and you know, we're asking, we have uh, Christine Obers is asking for the name of that ink one more time, if you've got it. Okay, there it is right there. And, okay. And it's, all might, Japanese, might, it's all in Japanese, so I don't know. You might have to do a screen grab, you guys. Okay, go ahead and hold that up for three seconds for people to yeah. get a quick screen yeah. grab of that. And this way you guys can go ahead and do an image search on that. Um, all yeah, right, it's, well, it's a really good ink, and, and, and it's not that expensive. I think this is about a seven dollars or something okay. but what's what's nice is uh i use these baby 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 battle uh baby food bottles right and I pour it in there and then you can also put a little alcohol in there to thin it out yeah. and so you can just carry that and just open it up put your your brush in there and just use it from that right. so you don't have to carry this around with you all the time you just kind of fill it as you as you need it and, and is this inks low in shellac or any kind of um, reflective medium that might 
it's it's uh, it's if you brush it with alcohol it'll run a little bit but not much okay but it's but it doesn't have a like a sheen to it where oh, no it, no it would make it difficult flat. for your pastel to adhere yeah it's very flat it soaks into the paper so it doesn't give you a, a tooth it doesn't diminish the tooth at all awesome so it's i've used that one and then i've used the. Uh, I've used this. I've used this Higgins ink. Yes, Higgins. Higgins is, yes. I've used this, which is uh, I don't know. Uh, I guess that's acrylic, dark acrylic, but I didn't like it. It just yeah. didn't. This didn't. It, this one filled the tooth too much. Uh, this one you don't get much for your money, and uh, so I found this, and and it works great. Well, did you, did you, have you worked, since you're working with black ink, have you worked on UART Dark and done somewhat of that reverse? Have you worked uh, on UART Dark? Yeah, I did. I, I, I did that and I can't get used to that. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's like you're working negatively, you know, it's yeah. just, yeah. There was a gal that I found in the Pastel Journal. Uh -huh. I really would like to get her out to do workshops. It was in this issue of, of Pastel Journal. Uh -huh. Her name is Lorinda Plakos. I, I think that's a Greek name, but her her paintings are just fantastic. Look what she does. Ah, yeah, I see that. See the painting on the right? That's, yeah. that's the painting, but look at all that black ink she put on there to get that painting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and look at the look at the other thing she did. Yeah. I mean, I was really turned on by her, and that's what got me going with with ink. So that's what's, okay, so, so this is this is these pieces here are what motivated you to do what you're going to work on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the reason you bought you buy this painting because you never know what you're going to find. You know, right. some new technique or something, and. And when I saw that and what she did with her ink, I thought, wow, I, I, want, I got to learn how to do that. And so right. I bought the ink, various kinds. I tried different ones. And then I settled on that particular one that I have. And it's been, it's been great. Well, you know what, Mike, we, we're up at, uh, let's see, we're at 7-Eleven. So why don't, why don't we get, uh, we'll let you get started. Okay. If anybody, anybody has some questions, we can, uh, if you, you can put it, go ahead and put it on, on, uh, on the chat, if you wish. And then we'll do a, a little bit of a Q&A right after. We'll just let Mike get started and let him focus on his piece. Okay. And, uh, and let's, let's, you know, maybe if, if you, if you're up for it, Mike, maybe you could, maybe you talk us through it. Okay. I'm going to just start drawing this, uh, this upper cabin here. See that line right there? Right. This line. So it's it's about here, I think. Uh, this uh, this is going to have a slight roundness to it, like that. And there's going to be some windows in here, about like that. And uh, this is the the center of the boat, and you're looking more this way. So this center window is about in here, somewhere like that, something like that. What are you using to create your initial sketch? Oh, okay. This is something I found at the Art of Supply Warehouse. It's, uh, let's see. How come you're not seeing it? Well, you got you to sneak it over to, to your left. Sneak it over to your left and up. Left and up. A little further. Let oh, see. here it is. Okay. Yeah, there. there you go. There, there you go. Okay. There you go. So go ahead and lift it up. Yeah. We're not okay. seeing it. We're not seeing it. There it is. Okay, right there, right there, right there. Okay. okay. Back it up. There it's, called, it uh, it's called Progresso. And it's a, it's a pencil with no wood. It's all, it's all like a solid piece of colored pencil. <laughs> okay, you so. Have, you never have to sharpen it. Is it wax-based? Huh? Is it wax-based? It's kind of like drawing with prismacolor pencils okay so it does have a bit of a wax to it yeah it's 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 the same consistency as prismacolor okay and it comes in various colors let me show you um have you found any resisting 
No, I like it. I mean, you can put pastels over it and it covers, the ink is, is great with it and uh, it comes in different colors. I just happen to like this particular color for sketching. It's been, it's been working out and they're cheap. They're about awesome. 80, 80 to 90 cents a piece. Yes. And you, you never have to sharpen it. You just, you just draw. And, yeah. it, and it's really an awesome piece of, uh, and it's made in um, Czechoslovakia. Okay. And again, uh, the name of that again, Mike, we're gonna put it in the chat. It's called Progresso. Progresso. Made by Koinor. You know Koinor. It's oh also, yeah. It's, it's a good pencil company. It's made by Koinor. And it's, 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 it's great. I got uh, I buy I buy them by the dozen like this. Yeah. Colors. Okay. And it comes with a sharp point. And it's fantastic. I I I I've kind of thrown away all my Prisma colors now because you don't have to <laughs> <laughs> all right. and oh. uh, most of my sketches. Are not that well detailed, so I don't need to have a, a you know super sharp end on it. So uh, it's been working great for me. All right. Well, uh, while you get back to your drawing, I want to let you know that uh, Janice Janice Box says she definitely wants one of your books. So okay, we're going to give Janice your information here in just a little bit. Your contact information. We're going to give me your website. So if you go, go ahead and give us your website, Mike. It's. Uh, M I K E, no, that's my that's my email. <laughs> yeah, I, I I never look at my website. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna look up your, your I'm gonna look up your website. I want to give your email. Uh, I, I don't want to give your your email to the whole world. So what I'll do is I'll give your website. Let me look it up. Give me a quick second. Go ahead, yeah. go ahead, Mike. You go ahead and sketch, and I'll I'll, I'll give. It's, it's Ishikawa Pastels, at AOL. I mean, let me look here. <laughs> I set it up and I never look at the damn thing. Here's my here's my card. Okay. I'm looking it up right now. Let's see what you got. Oh, you might have to back it up just a little bit. That's okay. You want know, like it's a little hard to decipher. So what I'm going to do is it's uh, it's called www.pastelsishikawa.com. Uh, okay, got it. Pastelsishikawa.com. All right, let me write that down. Pastels. All right. Well, that's running a little slow since I've got the Zoom going. So that's that's pretty much the uh, the cabin part. Okay. And, uh, Right in here is, um, I think this kind of comes down a little bit there. And then right in here is, is this part. And then there's another one up here, kind of like that. It's a bigger one. And here is kind of like the water line. And then, uh, Across here is that dock. I like to use a straight edge for keep everything straight. And like you know the the the, the uh, masts and things like that. I just use that. Uh, Tony Elaine taught me how to do that. He, uh, yeah. How do you get that nice horizon line? He says, what he does to get that horizon line is he goes like this. That's how he gets that horizon line. <laughs> <laughs> and when you push hard on that edge, see how you get that nice kind of a, 
a fade out look on that. Yeah. And so, so rather than trying to go like that and, and trying to get it perfectly straight, put that thing down and just sweep across and it gives you a horizon line very quickly. So that's, so let's see, I'm gonna put this Utros in here, someplace in here. Put some windows in here. There's a little, kind of little something in here like that. A little awning across there. And uh, there's some hills back in there with some palm trees. Like that. There's a boat in. So right in here, looks like the, the wharf goes this way. And there's a boat in here. That's about all you need. And uh, we can start inking now. <clears throat> So uh, for inking, <clears throat> I get a brush like this, nice big broad brush. Right. I think this is about uh, what, uh, maybe three quarters of an inch, maybe. So right in here. Wow, you get that one edge. Yeah. Boom. Uh, <clears throat> now I'll come in here with a smaller brush and I'll put these windows in here. See how nice that, that ink gives you that really black, rich, dark. So that gives you that window and we'll put the windows in the neutrals. And then the dock, I'll put this back up there again. Uh, see that dark line there? Yeah. I'm gonna put that in there now. And there's some uh, pilings in here, so I'm just gonna Do something like that. And again, we want to remind everyone that you know you don't want to use any kind of special brush because this paper or any kind of sanded paper is just going to shred those brushes. Yeah, yeah. These, time. these are cheap old brushes you can buy. They're about this one I bought yesterday. It's a Princeton brush. It's uh, six dollars. Yeah. And it's, uh, I, li I like the acrylic uh, bristle rather than the uh, natural ones. Yeah. You can, what's nice about it is see, you get that nice sharp point, that edge, yeah. that cutting edge. Well, you also, let's see, there's also uh, the Zen brushes, which are also relatively inexpensive. Uh, you can get those they're called Zen and, and they also hold a pretty decent, uh, a decent edge. I'm just going to put that pilings in on one side of it. And uh, what else is there dark? Let's see, Margie, Margie's asking, when I see what number, what number brush are you using for those windows? What number, what are we talking? 
This one's a half inch. Half, half inch. inch. Uh, right, so there's no number or no size number for it? No, I don't see anything. Let's see. Uh, nope. No number two, no number. No, it's a, it's called a Princeton. Uh, okay, I don't see a number on there either. Okay, so Princeton, a half inch. Yeah, it's a half inch. It's a okay. half inch wash, they call it. Right. This particular one is an old one. It's a Blick. And this one's a 20. Right. So that's about a one inch. Yeah. Yeah, this one is a cheap brush. You can see it's just kind of falling apart, you know, like that. Yeah. The paint's coming off, yeah. but it still works. And um, this is another one that I bought. This one is uh, made by Topaz. Right. And it's got that nice sharp edge again, which I like. So. Awesome. Just, just kind of stock up on that stuff because you, you never know if you if once you lose one, you know, you, you're stuck. So it's better to have two, more than one. I'm going to come in and put that railing in. Yeah. Even though I'm going to cover it up. So. No pressure because you're Mike in Chicago, but we just want to let you know that we have about a half hour. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. All right. All right. Let's let's start putting on some uh, pastel now. <clears throat> so um, I, that blue color there. It's pretty rich. Yeah, it's a nice rich blue. So I'm going to come in here. And by the judge, uh, judging, uh, I'm seeing a lot of of different sort of pastels in your box here. It looks like we've got some Terry's, uh, Jack Richardson's maybe, Unison? No, I I gave uh, the Jack Richardson, I won a huge box, 100 and 200 and something. I uh -huh. donated to uh, one of the uh, raffles at the pastel. Oh, I, oh, did you? I didn't like them at all. Oh, OK. And then uh, I had some Rembrandts. The first set of pastels I bought was were Rembrandts. And uh, I used them for a while. And somebody told me about Sennelier's. And I think I gave that, that box to Joe. Joe still has that bo the box of pastels. Yeah. And yeah. now I've got these. These are um, Sennelier's. Uh, uh, no, Schminkies. Oh, really? The Schminkies? And of course, these are Blue Earth. The right. little uh, okay. Uh, I've got a few uh, Terry Ludwig's. Uh, and um, the reason I don't like Terry Ludwig's is I like a pastel about that size. Okay. So when I draw, uh -huh. I cover a lot. Now the ter the the Terry Ludwig's when you when you break them in half. They, the two. Turn out, they turn out to be little round footballs after a while. Uh, they, okay. they get, they're kind of loose, too short. And so right. they be little round footballs. And so I don't like them. So what's your go-to now, Mike? What are your go-tos then? I go, I go, I like schminkies. schminkies. Really? The schminkies? Oh, yeah, wow. Schminkies and I like uh, Blue Earth. Blue Earth are just fabulous. I mean, you get these nice darks like that. Blue Earth are, are, are good. So Blue Earth, Minkies. Uh, I bought some Sennelier's because I went down to um, uh, uh, that's the Art Supply Warehouse because I wanted some darks. And you know, when you buy them on the internet, you look at the color chart and then you get it. It's just, gee, that's not working. It, it's not the same. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you really have to go there and just look at it. You know, that's, that's yeah. what I found out. And uh, so, yeah, I... I kind of like purples, I like oranges, I like pinks, and I like blues. And I don't, I don't use browns that much in my paintings. Um, I took a class with Liz and, and she says, well, where's your browns? I says, well, I, I don't have that many browns. <laughs> <laughs> so I got, you know, maybe uh, four browns in this box. That's about it right here. Uh -oh. That's about it. And I got some grays and, so, I, got, I, got, I got a ton of browns. 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, uh, so I try to keep my underpaintings pretty loose. You can see that there's a, some back in there, and I'm gonna do the list list thing, and I'm gonna put an opposite color on the sky. Mm -hmm. Oh, the other thing I want to do, I like to do uh, with my um, palm trees. Mm -hmm. it, um, you know, everybody wants to do these palm trees that look like this. You know, like that. And I like I like more of a random kind of palm trees. It's kind of like that. Some are going to be up high. That's what I like to put in for palm trees and then cut around them. Yeah, the store that Mike goes to is called Art Supply Warehouse. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's a great store. It's in Westminster. And everything is, is uh, at a discount. You can buy sketchbooks. Pencils, pens. Uh, like I said, these are, are are eighty cents there, and I think they're about dollar fifty, dollar sixty normal price. Uh, you can buy a uh, schminky pastel for four fifty, a big stick, yeah. four fifty. Uh, they're they they're discontinuing the schminkies now, so right now you can get them for two fifty a stick there right now. 250. Wow. Yeah. Their Sennelier's are about four, 440 a stick. And um, I've noticed today that uh, Sennelier is using a different wrapper on their on their pastel sticks now. They're using kind of like a, a plastic material that sandwiches it real tight. And I didn't get any that were broken today. I mm -hmm. bought a half a dozen sticks. Oh, wow. And so, you know, the other thing that I found out, which is fantastic, are these little things. Yeah, the Dan Thompson's. No, these are called. Um, oh, oh, excuse me. Those are the, the, you know, the Tarajas, right? Diane, Diane Townsend Tarajas. Tarajas, yeah. And I don't know if you've ever used them. I've never used them before. And um, I got a box of. Uh, of uh, used pastels that I bid on, and uh -huh. it had a couple of these in there. And I thought, oh, no, I, I, have a, I have a few of those. In fact, I really like, uh, I believe it's called the uh, the Diane Townsend number 10, which is a beautiful uh, lush white that I, I really like to hit for, you know, like the highlights and stuff like that. So yeah. this, uh, one, this one's number 128. Uh, and, and for waves, I mean, you can just, I mean, look at that. Just, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it's just, Excellent. It just wipes out a, a, a. It can go right over black, and you don't see anything. This yeah. is fantastic. So these the, these are really. This is another fun find that I found. And for whites, uh, it, <coughs> it's better than than these. These yeah. are of course um, blue earth. Yeah. And I, I like these better. And for waves, this is fantastic for waves. I I love it for waves. So anyway, let's go uh, with the rest of this now. Yeah, we're coming up at, uh, we're at 7.32. I wanna, I wanna finish this before. Okay, let's put this dock in. You can kind of go crazy with colors because it doesn't matter. You're going to. OK, here we go. Brown. <laughs> go crazy, right? Brown, brown pilings. And uh, there's some green back here. 
I'm going to put some green. Okay. I'm going to just leave all of that alone and then I'm going to I'm going to wash this now. Uh, if you go to a restaurant and you get these little babies, you know, like uh, these are like for dressing that you take home, right. save them. And they're perfect for like alcohol. You can kind of dip your alcohol in there and look what it does. See how that ink, it just kind of shows right through. Yeah. You don't wipe it out. Yeah, and that ink dries fairly fast. So it's yeah. not even, yeah. it's not really even blurring, is it? It's not washing off. No. And then see when you put the different colors on there, you can kind of get that nice vibrant color going on there. You can stroke up a little bit and do that. See how that nice, uh, I love that color. And let's do this boat. We'll, we'll put some of that blue in here too. Okay, um, now, now what I do is I take this. The good old blow dryer. This is my hair dryer. Yeah. The best place to buy these things is go to um, the Salvation Army store, anywhere <laughs> to buy used furniture and stuff. You can buy these for about $4 a piece. Yeah. This particular one, is a is a is a con air and uh oh, it's a con air yeah. and if you bought it in in the drugstore you'd be 20 paying 25 bucks right yeah. four dollars yeah let her rip so, now watch what happens to this blue when you, when you put this color on it starts fading out it's getting lighter see how it's getting lighter It doesn't take that long. That's about it. Excellent. Now, now, now comes the fun part. You can see the uh, they're kind of similar, you know, you got the same basic outline, but I, but I like the idea of that dark darkness, the light to the dark. And on this cabin now, you can see how it's going to be a little darker on that side because the sun's coming in this way. So I'm going to come in now with a, a little different color. I'm going to kind of do that. And uh, where's my straight edge? Oh, here it is. That particular bow, bow, bow line there is kind of important. So I'm going to That gives you that nice transition. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm going to work on the boat so that people can see what's going on. Uh, okay. 
that line right there, right about there. And this side is going to be a little faint, so I'm just going to use a blue. Just going to do that. This, this one is a little thicker. So I'm going to press it a little harder. <clears throat> now, because um, the, uh, the sun is going to be on this side, you're going to see a little dark line underneath there. Let's go to the cabin now. The, re the, the reason I like soft pastels is, is I don't like to go scribbling back and forth. I like to just go over it once and that's it. So that's what I'm going to do here. Um, that one is a little bit too wide. I'm going to do this one. Doing the same thing here. Okay. There's some blues and little things in there, which makes it kind of nice to do. You can just and uh, we'll put a little highlights like that in there. Now this railing is in there. <clears throat> I'm gonna put a little dark line under here. Now this railing is white, but there's gonna be this colored pencil now since uh I don't know if you're gonna see but the sense of light's coming on that side I want to get some get a little bit of light coming in on that end and then you don't have to keep it Exactly alike. I like to put a little detail in here. Maybe come in here with some white. Okay. Uh, for a little color, rather than that being kind of white, I'm going to put a little orange down here. Just to give us some color and maybe see the little orange up there. I'm going to put right. that here too. And for a little detail, there's some shadow line in there. So I'm going to put some shadow line in there like that. Okay. There's a little bit of, of reflective light over there, which I'm going to try to get. And Now I'm going to 
me try to, I like this dark part down here. Now, that reflection line is right down there. So I'm just going to keep that coming like that. And there's going to be a little, little bit of that orange reflection down here, like that. Let's go to these uh, piles. I kind of wiped them all out, so I'm going to have to bring them back a little bit. I'm going to put a little highlight on, on the side. Very, very softly. And the, the tops of them are going to be a little brighter. So I'm going to just dig in a little bit more. Something like that. <clears throat> Now that dock is kind of nebulous, but I want to make it a little more interesting. So I'll come in with this kind of like a, like a reddish brown or something right here. So we, let's do this first. I'm going to use this again. My, I give you that kind of top and I'm going to try to make it more like a board gangplank kind of a thing. And we can come in here and on. I should use this. And as you get as you get further back, they're going to be a little closer together. couple of trash cans here so I'm going to put that in blue. This one right back here. I'm going to put a, maybe a little like a fishing net or something up in there just to keep that blue going. Of course you got to get the back side of this trash can so that it has a nice circle to it. And let's put a little top on there. And there's going to be some shadow. So uh, just to Janice, I want to let you know that um, I believe, Margie, did you get the, the photo, the, the photo reference that, that Mike sent you? Because um, Janice was asking if um, if, yeah, I, I yeah. sent I sent it to Margie, and I said to just try to you know get it to everybody so they can follow along. Okay, well, Janice, yeah, she was just wondering if she can get the the photo. Oh, so And of course, she said photo of the finished painting would be helpful. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. In fact, we can auction it off or raffle it off or something. Uh. Uh, <clears throat> Utrose is going to be back here. I'm going to use this uh, new art 
or new new pastel new pastel yeah it's a little harder i don't like it i'll use this one the french fries of pastels see you get that nice look that way <clears throat> This particular area was black. I'm gonna go with a dark blue. Here it is. So Mike, we have uh, about 10 minutes. Okay. About 10 minutes. All right, let me try to speed it up a little bit. Now this side is going to be kind of a more in shadow, so I'm going to make it a little darker. Right. See. Board in here. Let's put this board in here. Blue bolt back there too. Cabin up there. And there's some buildings in the back. So I'm just going to take like a little gray color and just kind of mimic some buildings. <clears throat> That's a good color. See, that's what, that's what Liz was talking about. You can let some of that red come through to give it that glow. For the palm trees, I like to kind of cut them in. Essentially, palm trees are just blobs. You know, they're, they're, there's not a whole lot of you don't you don't see the individual prawns that much. See this ultra. There's a little green onion across there. Now there's a shadow over here, so I'm going to put the, put the shadow in. And I'm going to, I like to put these little marks in here. Uh, 
Now, <clears throat> this, is the, this is the fun part. Uh, <clears throat> take the, this pastel. The sky's not done yet, but I'm going to just go ahead and let you know how I do that. This is not white. I got to get white. I'll use this. Okay, that's uh, that's it. Excellent. Yeah, it's a really nice play. Of, uh, the contrast between the blues and oranges, the complementary colors. It, yeah, it I just, think, I think a, you finished it off. All this, I think it'll kind of come together in that part in there. Yeah, no, it, really yeah. nice vibrancy. Excellent. Well, you guys, uh, go ahead and unmute yourselves at this point. Go ahead and give a nice round of applause to Mike. And uh, if you have any quick uh, questions or comments, uh, go ahead. Yeah. Nice job, Mike. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Believe so much Mike. done in such a short bit of time. No kidding. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, Mike, what um, now? I know we were constrained on, on, on time, but uh, I mean, you have, there's such a sense of design, right? Even in the strokes, right? You're, 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 you're thinking, what is your, your main concern for a, a piece like this? Was it, was, it, uh, was it color or value? What, what is it, when you're doing a painting, do you have a certain, let's say, uh, fo focus? Is there, is, there, is there an itemized list as to, list as, uh, as to what takes priority? To me, if, if a photograph doesn't have really nice darks mm -hmm. and nice lights, uh, it's going to be hard to accomplish a good painting from it. Here's another board I was going to do today, but I decided to focus on that one. But see okay. it, all the nice dark. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you got to have those darks in order to have a nice painting. If it's yeah. washed out, you can have a washed out photo, uh, painting. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's hard to replicate where the darks are. I mean, it's because you're, you're, you, you, have to, you have to take a lot more time and figure out where the sun's coming from. But, but if you have it here, you know where that sun's coming in from and see those nice shadows back in here? Yeah. Mm. I mean, those are, those are hard to get, you know, <laughs> if you don't have the right photograph. So with, with photographs, I think that's the key. I mean, so many people that I see going, they go at 12 o'clock in the afternoon and they start shooting these pictures. Oh. And all you do is get a washed out photograph. It's not gonna be a very interesting painting. But if you can get that painting in the morning when you get those nice deep shadows or in the, in the afternoon, that's when you get a nice painting out of it. So if you want a good painting, forget shooting between 10 and 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. Concentrate your photographs from 7 in the morning till 9 or 10 and from about 4 till sunset. That's, how you, that's when you get your good photographs. That's right. you get your good paintings. If you uh, don't, if you don't have a good photograph, you're not going to get a good painting. Well, this was an excellent, excellent demo. Thank you, Mike. Uh, again, you can find us at uh, at Pastel Society of Southern California on our YouTube channel. You can see our videos there. We have plenty of videos there that demonstrate all the different techniques and styles that our our artists have um, have shared with us. So, and if you'd like to, again. Uh, see our schedule for theme Thursdays 
or see what PSSC is up to, you go ahead to uh, pssewebsite.org. Mike, go ahead, yet you were gonna say something. Uh, yeah, uh, one of the things that I've been gravitating toward is backlit trees. Where yes. The, where the sun is behind the trees and you get this dark mass mm -hmm. and it, it creates these interesting uh, photographs. And that's what this, this gal, Lorinda, was concentrating on back in here. Right. Backlit trees. That one's a pretty somber painting. Did, did she use ink too, Mike? Yeah, yeah. look at that. Oh, she did, okay, yeah. okay. All right, oh, ink wash, okay. Starting with yeah. ink. Look at yeah. that. Okay. Well, Mike. So it's a new thing, you know I mean? It's yeah. got to try different things. And yeah, that's uh, true. Soon you get something that, that you like. What's her name again? If you keep doing the same old thing over and over again, you're going to get the same old results. Mike, why don't you give us her name again? Her name is, I, I've talked to her several times and she, she's been battling cancer or something and because I wanted to bring her out for a workshop. Her name is Lorinda Placos O'Connor. Lorinda. Yeah, here's a picture of her. I think there's a picture over here. There she is right there. Yes, it's a, a, little, yeah. a little difficult to see. Yeah. But, but again, uh, Lorena, and it's, it's in the Pastel Journal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pastel Journal, February of 2021. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we want to thank Mike once again. We, want, we thank everyone who joined us uh, this Thursday. We are looking forward to our next theme Thursday. Margie, why don't you tell us about our next theme Thursday? Uh, the next theme Thursday is going to be with Bernard Fallon, and he's going to talk about uh, marketing, I okay. believe, and photographs. Marketing and marketing and, and uh, your art and photographs. And uh, give us a date, please. That would be the 20, I'm looking at my calendar, sorry. That would be the 21st, is that correct? That sounds right. Let me look at mine. <laughs> oh, no, no, it would not be the 21st. I'm sorry. It's the, uh, the week after. It's the week after. I'm, I'm sorry, I have to bring down my, my desk a little bit. Uh, that would be the 25th, 28th, sorry. Sorry, 28th, 28th. Right. 28th, right. Yeah. Either way, you can you can always go to pssewebsite.org and, and you can see when our next theme Thursdays are coming up again. Uh, pretty easy to remember. It is the uh, second and fourth Thursday of uh, each month. So we're looking forward to seeing you then. And uh, all right, well, uh, once again, thank you, Mike. We certainly appreciate it. Everybody have a good rest of your evening. Thank you, Lisa, for staying with us. I know it's late uh, in Florida. I, so. <laughs> I was eat, I had to eat dinner and everything, but I just want to say Mike and Otto and everyone that's here, like Mike has been my mentor and thank you for having me. Mike, I've learned a lot tonight. That negative space, that black, that ink, I got you now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're so, we're, we're, yeah, this is, uh, this is, we're so glad to have this, uh, this program. So, yeah, 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 oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Excellent. The colors. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank All right. you. See you guys see. later. Yeah, take care, everybody. We'll Thank you, Mike. We'll Thank you, Otto. Thank you, Bye. 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 Bye